All right, hey everyone, thank you so much for coming out. I'm super excited to introduce our speaker today, Jia Zhang. Jia Zhang is the author of Rejection Proof. It's his story of 100 days of rejection. So to conquer his fear of rejection, he actually actively sought out different rejections and uh, he had all these crazy little kind of stories going along with it. So he is also a viral superstar. He has over 5 million views on one of his YouTubes. So that's gonna be one of his videos that he might show you today. And he's also a member of our Google family. His wife is actually one of our program managers in G Tech Consumers. So without further ado, please help me give Jia Zheng a very, very warm googly welcome. Charles said um, the, the introduction will be 30 seconds. Actually, really good on time. So <laughs> you did a good job, too. Um, <clears throat> so if I come here and tell you, hey, I found a solution to one of your biggest problems you will find in life, whether that's your professional career, um, academic career, or personal life, what, what are you going to say to me? You might be like, yeah, right. You know, what are you trying to sell? Um, well, you might reject me right here. But rejection is precisely what I'm talking about. It's the fear of rejection that's one of the biggest problems we'll find in life. It's the type of fear that, yeah, you know, keeps us in line, make sure people like us, and make sure we don't do anything crazy. But it's also the type of fear that might keep you asking from what you want, getting what you need, and sometimes even achieving your dreams. And I did find that solution. But before I go there, I'll tell you a little bit about who I am and uh, precisely the two versions of me. You know, we're, we're Silicon Valley, right? The two ver versions. So the version 1.0 is all about gifts. Who doesn't like them, right? Um, well, when I was six year old, I got my gift. I was in the elementary school. My, my f uh, first grade teacher had a brilliant idea. Brilliant, you know, I'm using air quote. She wanted us to experience the uh, receiving gifts as well as learning the virtue of complimenting each other. So she had all of us come to the front of the class and she bought all of us gifts uh, just like that and stacked them in the corner. And she said, why don't we come here and just compliment each other and say nice things. And if you hear your name called from another, uh, by another student, you go pick up your gift and sit down. What a great idea, right? What could possibly go wrong? Well, when it started, there were 40 of us. And every time when someone's name was called, I would give the heartiest cheer. And, you know, whether it's a good student, helpful to uh, teachers and whatever, and I would just applaud. And then there were 20 left, 10 left, five left, and three left. And I was one of them. And the compliment stopped. At that time, <laughs> I didn't want to compliment anymore. I, just want, I didn't want to give my gift anymore. I just want to sit down. And I was just crying. And the teacher, though, and she was just freaking out. And she, she, was, she, just, she was like, would anyone say anything nice about these people? No one? OK, what, why don't you go pick up your gift and sit down so you behave better next year? Someone will say something nice about you. So uh, that was one version of me. Uh -huh. And when I would die not to be in that situation again, getting embarrassed in front of people, getting, that's my first public rejection. Then fast forward. Mm, eight years. One is 14. I, I, grew up, I grew up in Beijing, by the way. And uh, uh, this guy came to my hometown to speak. And I heard him talk. I was in the audience. Um, Bill Gates. I know he's not that popular here, but you know, at the time, he was it. And by the way, I have no idea why this, this picture is in black and white. You know, it's, it's 20 years ago. It wasn't like in World War II days or you know, General Patton sitting there or something. But I, I, did, I guess he didn't have any, you know, Android or iPhone back then. Um, but he came to my hometown to speak. I was just mesmerized by his idea, by his story. I love his, the, the idea of using technology to change the world. And I just want to be like him. And that night, I wrote a letter to my family and, and telling them, hey, by age 25, I will build the biggest company in the world. And I will buy Microsoft. You know, I, uh, I just totally embrace this idea of dominating the world and buying everyone. And then I, I, I didn't make this up. I did write that letter. And here's that letter. Um, the first line says, no, I don't, I'm not going to go through this line by line. But I did highlight some keywords so you know what I'm talking about. Um, and in that letter, also, um, I also wrote, 
I will come to, to the United States someday to fulfill that dream. Uh, because, well, first of all, that's where Bill Gates lived. Yeah, Bill Gates was cool. I want to be where he lives. Um, but also, remember that year there was a, a movie that's called True Lies that came out. And it was my, still my favorite movie of all time. You know, in that movie, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he was like jumping through buildings on horsebacks and hanging on helicopters and saving the world. I'm like, wow, that's America. That's where I want to be. So I came when I was 16 um, under a cultural exchange uh, program as, as a cultural exchange student. And so I thought that's my start my, my dream, my entrepreneurial dream. And then fast forward another 14 years. Um, I was 30. <laughs> uh, and I did not build the biggest company in the world. I didn't even start. And even at work, I felt very stagnant. Um, you know, I, I just felt, I mean, from outside, I was doing pretty fine. Um, I was working at one of the, you know, biggest companies in the world, and I was, you know, collecting good income. A lot of people were, were asking me for jobs, and, but then I, but I still didn't do the things I wanted to do. I didn't go after my dreams. And even at work, I, you know, it's every time I feel like I have a new idea, every time I want to make a new proposal, every time I want to speak in a group, Every time I want to step up and do something, I just felt there was this constant battle between the, you know, the, the six-year-old and the 14-year-old. One wanted to change the world. Another was afraid of rejection. And so, and every time that six-year-old would run out. And so um, I just feel maybe I missed the boat. Maybe I got too old. And so I started my, this, this fear of rejection even extended after I started my own company. You know, I started my own company when I was 30. Um, you know, if you want to be Bill Gates, you got to start sooner or later, right? So I started my company and four months into my venture, I was rejected with the investment. Um, and uh, I was hurt. I was hurt so bad that I wanted to quit right there. Um, I was just having, I just thought this, Six-year-old was whispering in my ear again. You know, who do you think you are? You know, startups are for the geniuses like you know Bill Gates and you know Steve Jobs or, or Larry Page. You know, you're you're just a wannabe, and your friends are gonna laugh at you, and uh, your um, your in-laws gonna hate you probably even more. Um, so, and just you should quit. Stop embarrassing yourself. And um, and that's where it clicked for me, and I thought. Would Bill Gates give up after a simple investment rejection like that? Would any successful entrepreneur give up um, a rejection uh, after rejection? Would anyone successful in their career give up like that? No way. So I have to really put this six-year-old back to his place. And, uh, and once and for all, I cannot let, let him dictate my life anymore. So, um, you know, I... Um, I, I found, okay, but how can I do this? How can I overcome this fear of rejection? That's been bothering me my whole life. So I, um, I searched online, you know, Google is my friend. Um, I, I've, I just Googled, how do I overcome the fear of rejection? And then I came up, first of all, I came up with a bunch of psychology articles about where the pain and fear is coming, are coming from. That didn't say anything to me. Then I, I, I ran through a bunch of inspirational rah-rah articles and talks about, hey, don't take rejection personally. You know, is is um, just overcome it, and I'm like, who doesn't know that already? You know, if I if that if it's that simple, why was that hurt this bad? And then I came to a website. It's called rejectiontherapy.com. Um, how many of you have heard of rejection therapy, by the way? No one. Someone has to. Okay, I'll explain this to you. Um, rejection therapy is a game. It's a, a card game. It was a, um, uh, started by this Canadian guy, uh, entrepreneur. His name is Jason Comley. And so basically, it's a game that, it's a flash card game that asks you to look for rejection every day instead of avoiding rejection. So it gives you a 30-day challenge. So every day, ask you to get rejected at something. Maybe go, you know, just ask strange stuff. But in 30 days, you get rejected. But uh, after 30 days, you became uh, like a badass. You know, because you de desensitize yourself from the pain of rejection. And I just love this idea. I thought, I I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm not going to do this not only for, not, not just for um, uh, 30 days, and I'll do this for 100 days. And I'll come up with my own rejection attempt. 
I'm not going to listen to what the flashcard tells me because I have a little bit of authority issue, you know. And and so I, I'm I'm just using my my imagination to come up with my own rejection attempt. And I'll do this for 100 days, and I will use my phone to film it, and I'll put it on YouTube to make a video blog or a vlog, uh, and also I will tell the world about it so they will hold me accountable. Otherwise, I'll probably just quit pretty quickly. So um, this is what I did. Um, this is what the website looked looked then. Um, maybe you can see rejection one. Borrow $100 from a stranger. All right. I was working at this big building uh, in Austin, Texas at the time. And I just, one day I finished work, I came down. I saw this big guy uh, sitting behind a desk. It was, uh, it, it was like, uh, he looked like a security guard. So I just, uh, you know, approached him and, and I, was, I was walking toward him. I, I just feel the hair at the back of my neck was just standing up. I was just sweating. My heart was just pounding. And as he came, I said, um, hey, can I borrow $100 from you? And he looked up at me, he was like, no, why? And I just turned around and just say, I'm sorry. I just ran as fast as I could. I just felt so embarrassed. And that night, but you gotta, because I was doing the video, because I filmed myself with my phone, I have to experience this twice. So that night I was, uh, you know, I was seeing myself, I have to upload the video on YouTube, right? And I just saw myself frame by frame. I just saw how scared I was. I looked like this kid from the movie Sixth Sense. You know, I saw dead people. And, um, and then I saw this guy. He was, you know, he was a, a chubby um, looking guy, but he, he was pretty lovable. He wasn't menacing. And he didn't pull out a club. He didn't uh, use pepper spray or, you know, uh, calling police. He was just saying no. And he asked me why. In fact, he was ex inviting me to explain myself. I could have said many things. I could have said, well, I'm all trying to overcome my fear of rejection. Uh, that's why I'm trying to do this. Or I could have said, okay, I'm just trying to try something uh, new to see if it's possible. Uh, if you give me $100 and trust me, I'll give you 110 back. You know, that's 5%, that's 10% return. You're not, you're not gonna get down on stock market, stock market in one day. And I work upstairs. If you don't trust me, here's my driver's license. I could have negotiated. I could say if you don't, you can't do 100, I can, you can, I can do 50, you know, something like that. But I didn't do any of that. I just ran as fast as I could. And I'm like, wow, this is like a microcosm of my life. Every time I get rejected at something, I would just run um, when, because it was so painful for me. So I said the next day, no matter what happened, I'm not going to run. I'll stay engaged and I'll chat. So. Re rejection uh, two, request a burger refill. Um, of course, I didn't work at Google, so you, you can't pull this off here. You get free burger refill here. But um, I, was, uh, I went to a, uh, a burger joint, and after having a really, very juicy burger at, uh, for lunch, I went to the cashier and said, hey, can I get a, get a burger refill? I was like, what's a burger refill? I'm like, just a, like a drink refill, but with a burger. <clears throat> and he was like, sorry, we don't do burger refill, man. And I, so this is where the rejection happened. And I could be like, I could have just run right there like I did before. But this time I stayed. I said, well, uh, I love your burger. It's so good. If you guys do burger refill, I'll love you guys even more. And I'll come back here every day. And he was like, oh, thank you for the compliment. But sorry, we can't do burger refill. But I'll tell my managers, and maybe we'll do it someday. Um, I don't think they ever did burger refill <laughs> because I, I think that restaurant is still there. Um, <laughs> but when I left that day, that life and death feeling was, it was still awkward, it was still weird, still nervous. I was still nervous, but the li that life and death feeling was not there anymore. So I thought, wow, great. You know, two days in, I'm already learning stuff. If I just don't run, things can happen. Uh, and, and I just, you know, I, I don't f have to feel the fear if I just stay engaged. Um, then something happened, like something strange, really strange happened. People started to say yes to me, and more than once. So for example, uh, let me see. Rejection six, play soccer in someone's backyard. All right, so this one day I held a soccer, I held a soccer ball, I knocked on a stranger's door, I had my uh, uh, cleats and shin guards all decked out. And I knocked on the door, sir, uh, I said, sir, can I play soccer in your backyard? And he came out, and he had this giant Texas flag on his t-shirt. People do that in Texas, you know. And he was like, soccer in my backyard? Then he saw, I was all serious, I saw my cleats, and he was like, I guess so. All right, come on in. I was as confused as ever. 
So, and then so I, I went to his backyard and just bounced the ball off my foot and had him take a picture of me. Uh, so before leaving, I said, how can you say yes? And he's, he, he said, this is so off the wall. How can I say no? <laughs> okay. Um, then one day I, um, I, um, one day I, when I, I was driving, I saw a police car and I was, I, I, I flagged him down. You know, I, I put a police officer over and <laughs> for, for, I guess for re revenge. And I said, officer, can I drive your car? And he was, I, I'm not going to drive it away because if I do that, well, I'll probably get in trouble. But um, can I just sit there and listen to your radio and feel like a police officer and give it a spin, you know? And he was like, okay, you look pretty harmless, sure. So I got in a police car. And then in the front, by the way, in the driver's seat. <laughs> it would it, be different if I was in the back seat. Um, and, and then one day I said, what is something that's so impossible that someone would, there's no way I would get a yes. How about flying a plane? By the way, I had no license or courage or knowledge to fly a plane. So, uh, but I went to an airfield in Austin. I talked to this um, pilot looking guy in the, lo uh, in the lobby. I said, sir, can I fly your plane? And he was so happy. He was like, yeah, come on in, come on in. I'll teach you how to fly. This, I'm like, why? <laughs> And it turned out he didn't own a commercial jetliner or something. He, he owned a gyroplane. It's like a small plane, like a m miniature helicopter type of thing, or maybe like a motorcycle in the air. Um, and he, he's an enthusiast, a hobbyist, and he wanted to show everyone his awesome gyroplane. So he was so happy that I approached him. And then there's one day um, that my life got turned upside down. Um, it's never the same since. Day three, asked for uh, Olympic symbol donuts. How many of you have seen the video? Raise your hand. A few of you. Okay, most of you haven't. Okay, I get to show the video then. Um, it is. I'll show the full version. We'll have some time. I'm driving to a Krispy Kreme. Uh, I'm going to. Well, I know. I just got my hair cut yesterday. I look like a, a Viet Cong from the 1960s. Uh, it's okay. Uh, I'm gonna grow into it, or uh, my hair is gonna grow into me. Either way, uh, I'm driving toward Krispy Kreme. I'm gonna ask them to make me some specialized donuts, and uh, we'll see what happens. What kind of specialized donuts are you talking about? I like to have uh, getting a uh, you link the five donuts together, make them look like Olympic symbols. When are you looking to these? Huh? When? Uh, the next uh, 15 minutes. How did they link them this year? Just normal. Normal color is fine. You want this linked? Yeah. No, just uh, you got the five donuts together, look like a uh, Olympic like, symbol. Was it this way this year? Something like that. That would work. Just link any five donuts together, it's going to be awesome. It's going to take me longer. How long? Because I've got to catch them on the other side. And then they've got to get through the proofer and then drop in the fryer. It was the red, the red, blue, green, yellow. What's the other color? Uh, red, green, yellow, blue. Maybe white. Was it white? Could be. Oh my gosh, I haven't watched the Olympics in so long that I'm. I may not be able to link them, but uh -huh. maybe make them look like they're interlinked. Okay, that would be great. Because the only thing I'm worried about is if I try to put those through the proofer, they will unsettle the trays okay. and they'll end up falling. And then once they hit the fryer, you've got a divider. 
And if they hit that, they're going to get stuck. You know what I'm saying? If you can make that, you're going to make my day. Yep. Let me see what I can do. Okay. Try, but what do you think? Wow. That is really good. That is really good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the best I could do with what we've got. No, it's good. It's, it's, uh, it's good. It's more than, uh, than I thought it would be done. Um, so, great. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Jackie? Yes. All right, I'm a fan. Thank oh, you. You're way too kind. No, no, you're, you're, way you're, too kind. you're really good. All right, so uh, do I pay there? Don't you worry about that one's on me. Are you serious? Dead up. Dead up. Are you serious? Very. Extremely. Wow. Extremely. That's my pleasure. All right, Jackie. I'll, 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 take, I'll take it. But, man, you make me really happy today. All right. Thank you. Very All right. Welcome. See you. Give me a hug. <laughs> Enjoy. Okay. All right. Thank you. See you. You're welcome. Wow, sometimes you make a crazy request, you get an awesome answer. Jackie, who works for Krispy Kreme in Austin, Texas, thank you. You're awesome. As for me, I failed miserably because I did not get a no. All right, there are 97 more days to go. Hopefully there are more no's. Uh, or hopefully they're more like this. It just delights your heart. Um, this is what it looked like. Um, we that night uh, we had that for for uh, for dinner. By the way, when <laughs> it was it was really sweet, um, too sweet, but it felt sweeter the experience. By the way, when it was happening, I remember uh, Tracy was calling me and she was like, "Hey, dinner is ready." I'm like, um, hey, just hold on, honey. Oh, something amazing is happening. Um, so I just couldn't believe the just, just, you know, customer service or human kindness that was showing that movie. Right? If you own a business, don't you want to hire someone like Jackie to, to, to run your business? Um, and the world couldn't believe that either. Um, when I upload this video uh, on YouTube, it got over 5 million views in a, in a few days. And it was on the like front page of a lot, like some newspapers, like front page of Yahoo. It was on Reddit. It was on newspapers, like uh, like media across across the world. And there, you know, Business Week even flew like a couple uh, a reporter down to find out what I was doing, looking for ejection. You know, I used to think I love Business Week. It was my favorite magazine. I used to think I got to build this great company and they got to or become this famous guy or something to actually be on news, uh, on Business Week. It happened that day. Um, but the thing is, the some sort of internet fame or it didn't really, is not what I wanted. And what I want was really helping myself to overcome my fear. But also I wanted to do research. You know, I want to find out what is rejection. You know, is this, I want to turn this into a playground and, and to experiment on every theory I've read on in books and I've heard how to negotiate, how to communicate. And also, I was hearing stories. Because this video went viral, I was getting uh, emails and, and uh, social media comments from people from all over the world. And some of them were sharing their story with me. And they're saying somehow what I was doing was inspiring to them. It's as if they are living through this, uh, their own fear through my eyes. So for example, there is an artist in Austin, Texas. And she saw this video, and she was like, Oh, that video is nice. I love those donuts. But hey, I'm a real artist. You know, she makes art that's beautiful and profound. But she didn't share it with anyone. She's just like, this is my art. It's my space. Then she was like, if you can make that video viral, why shouldn't I share my art? And she did. 
So she shared with her uh, friend, family members, even local media. And it got picked up by national media, and she was invited to go to Washington, D.C. To, to provide a show. That was really amazing. And there was this guy, he, is, um, he, he wanted to go on a rejection request with me. He thought this was fun. He said, can I go with you? I'm like, sure. So, um, um, so he, uh, he, we had this idea of we go to a bank and borrow $100 bills to play paper plane fight. Um, it wasn't my best idea, you know. I, I, you know, I had a better moments. But when I, when I, um, so before going in, he was like, "Hey, don't worry. I know what to say. You know, just, I, you know, I have a plan." At that moment, before going to the bank, I just hope that plan did not involve a gun. Um, so we, he went in, and and the and the teller was like, "This sounds fun. Let's do it." And so um, we played some paper airplanes in the fight in the in the you know in the at the counter, and I won, I think. Um, but after coming out, the guy was telling me, wow, I never thought this would be possible. You know, I never tried this kind of thing before. And he started reflecting on his life. He's like, I, wanted, I always wanted to have this job. You know, I wanted to, uh, I've been in sales for 19 years, and I'm really good at my job. You know, I, I'm one of the best. But the thing is, I want to try something new. And I, want, I don't think I qualify for this job, but now I want to try and just ask. I want to see what happens. Not only he got a job, this is, a, this is a Fortune 100 company. Not only he got a job, he actually now, he, he, uh, he mans the entrepreneur center of UK, uh, UK for this company. It's his dream job times two. Um, so I'm like, wow, what is rejection? You know, what is this thing that, that by the way, I have hundreds of these videos. Where they're all kind of fun if you can get them on YouTube and see. But I was thinking, what is rejection? What is this thing that we're all afraid of? I thought I was the only one who was afraid of rejection. Maybe a few other people. And it turned out everyone was afraid of rejection in some way, uh, no matter how successful they are or um, how, how well they hide it. But if they, a lot of people are just making some sort of mindset change, they start making some profound changes in their lives. So I started putting the research to work and trying to find out what rejection is. And it turned out rejection is more, more or less a numbers game. You know, I, I made some requests that were totally outrageous. <clears throat> and someone would say yes to me. And I made some requests that are more, like, more or less borderline OK. And someone would say no to me. But the thing is, if you want to get a yes, I just talk to enough people. <laughs> One person will eventually say yes. It's almost as if every rejection has a number. If I just walk through that number, a, a no becomes a yes. Um, speaking of number, how many of you like, do you like Harry Potter? How many of you like Harry Potter? Raise your hand. Good. I, okay. I like you guys. Um, I love Harry Potter. Um, the Harry Potter is, is the best selling book in modern history. No, I'm, I'm not comparing it to the Bible or the Quran or, or you know, in ancient history. But modern history, Harry Potter blows every other book out of water. And, but you would think a book that good when it first came out, it would uh, be something like a hot cake, right? That's not the case. The, the author, J.K. Rawlings, she had to go through 12 different publishers to get her book published. And every time they told her the same feedback, and they're like, you're trying to, you're trying to write a children's book with dark magic and uh, um, with, with uh, people dying in it and this long? Who's going to read that? No way. After the 12th rejection, the chairman of the publisher, I mean, he also gave her the rejection, but he handed the manuscript to his granddaughter who could not put it down. She refused to eat. She refused to sleep. She just kept re reading and reading until she finished and totally exhausted herself. And the chairman was like, wow, there is something here. So he agreed to publish the book, and the rest is history. The thing is, had J.K. Rowling given up in any of the 12 tries, had the uh, chairman not handed the manuscript to, the, uh, to his granddaughter, there would be no Harry Potter, and there would no be no big fight between Harry Potter and Voldemort at the end. That would make me really mad. Um, but think about it. If Harry Potter had, I mean, if J.K. Rowling had to go through 12 different rejections to get Harry Potter published, what about uh, ideas come up from you and me? S maybe, and I, sometimes I feel the ability to fight through rejections is almost as important as coming up with good ideas. And, um, and that rejection is just an opinion. You know, we, I think we need many things in the world. Here, here in California, we need water, for sure. Uh, but the, whole, the world as a whole, we need love, sympathy, you know, more, more, more bathrooms and free drinks, for sure. Um, but one thing we really have plenty of is opinion. Just get on internet, turn on your TV, everyone has something to say about something. And they can't wait to tell you about their opinion. It's, it's, I think opinion is probably the cheapest resource on Earth. 
you know, it's, it's also completely renewable too. But as when it comes to rejection, it's nothing more than the preference and opinion of the rejector. It actually says more about the rejector than, than the rejected. So um, when, you, like, you, when you make uh, your request known, the person size you up and says yes or no to you, or maybe it's a group of people. But that depends a lot, not just it's totally on you. It says a lot about that person. It could be him or her, the, the, feed, you know, the mood of the day. Uh, maybe it's based on uh, you know, the education that come up for a whole lifetime. Maybe it's, it's uh, his or her background, or maybe it's the you know, prejudice. Who knows? Um, it, but somehow when it comes to rejection, we think it's all about us. We, we think it's some sort of universal truth about who we are, but also it's like, a, like indictment of our character or the merit of our idea. But it's not. It's really just an opinion. And then rejection is a, a tool. This is the picture of a dumbbell. I just have to find a better picture next time. I'm sorry. Um, but I often tell people, if someone hands you a weight, if you don't know how to handle it, you're going to just drop it on your foot. You're going to hurt yourself really bad. Or you try to turn around and run, you're going to hurt yourself. But if you know how to handle rejection, you can safely put it down on a rack or on the floor. And better yet, if you know how to use rejection to your advantage, you can exercise. You can use um, your rejection to actually gain muscle. So. I did this for 100 days. Every day, I put myself just outside my comfort zone. And I went out and asked and asked and asked. And gradually, my comfort zone expanded. And, and toward the end, I felt invincible. I felt I could ask anything from anyone anywhere. And so right now, I run an online gym. Uh, it's part of my business right now. It's a gym for the mind where I ask, challenge people to get rejected every day. And just a couple weeks into this, you know, a lot of times people can just, they start asking weird stuff. They started to negotiate uh, uh, money off their monthly bills. They started, you know, some, some people start changing their hair color. They start doing things they would never thought what they would, they would do. Um, it's just in, pretty incredible. And they also have ramification in their professional career. They feel they can, uh, if they're, they're in sales, they can, they can sell their product better. Or anyone, they can sell their um, uh, ideas better. It's kind of really amazing. I used to think that your confidence your charisma or your courage is really probably born based on your personality, right? But actually, that's not the case. In this 100 days, I, I almost had a, pers a personal transformation. You know, I became a different pe uh, person. I just felt so much more bold. And I used to hate the idea of self-help. I still do, actually. You know, I, I don't think that they do anyone any, any good. It's you know, maybe a lot of... You know, late night infomercials, but I in this hundred days I went th went through a personal transformation that, that I didn't need any self help book to, to to you know to work with, and so and then it's uh, rejection is also a source of knowledge, is um, so that's why I wrote a book uh, that just to share the knowledge. I went to a pretty good business school, and I'm sure a lot of you went to you know some of the best schools in the world. I thought I learned a lot about business, and um, but. I, in, I can say in this 100 days, I probably learned more about communication and human nature than, than ever did in business school or any school. Because I put myself out there talking to real people, making real negotiation, being really weird. <laughs> and, uh, and I learned a whole lot. So for example, I'll share some uh, here. One thing I learned is you can actually maximize your chance to get a yes by telling the other people that a doubt they might have, or maybe a weakness you might have in your um, in your uh, in your argument, in your request. So I, you know, I used to be like, if I want to sell a product, if I want to sell an idea, or maybe doing a job interview for myself, I would just say how awesome I am, you know, and how flawless this product is, and this idea will be the best, you know, in the world. But people have doubt, and sometimes they don't even mention the doubt; they just keep it in their mind, and to your detriment. Um, and those doubts would not go away. But if I mention their doubt before they would mention it, actually, I can totally uh, maximize my chance of getting a yes. One day, I went to a Starbucks. And I, I went in, and I asked the manager, can I be a Starbucks greeter? Uh, that's my 100 days of rejection. And he was like, what's a Starbucks greeter? I'm like, do you know Walmart greeters? Um, <laughs> the people who stand in front of Walmart, they say hi to you, probably make sure you don't steal stuff from them. Um, I'm going to try that at Starbucks. Uh, if, um, I will give your customers a Walmart experience at Starbucks. Um, I'm not sure that's a good thing. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's a bad thing. <laughs> but uh, he was like, oh, I'm, 
I'm not sure. I mean, he's a really nice guy. He was like, I'm not sure. Then I can just see his, like, his mind is churning. And then I ask him, is that really weird? He was like, yeah, it's really weird, man. Um, then as soon as he said that, his whole demeanor changed. Our conversation changed. And he was like, I think I'm going to let you do this. Just please don't get too weird. You know, don't, don't, don't try to sell stuff to my customers. So for the next hour, I, uh, uh, I was a Starbucks greeter. Uh, I say hi to every customer walking in. I shook hands with them. I tell them, told them about Starbucks coffee, just to my best knowledge. I give them holiday cheers. And uh, by the way, I don't know what your career trajectory is, but don't be a greeter, please. It, it, it was the worst job I've ever, seen, I've ever done. It was just boring. If they have a Google greeter at the cafeteria, please don't, don't, please don't volunteer. Um, but um, it was... But he was able to let me do it because, and he, I mentioned, is that weird? And the funny thing is by mentioning, is that weird? I, I, I showed one thing, I wasn't weird. I showed to him that I'm thinking just like him. I know you feel this is weird, so I can empathize with you. And over and over again in this 100 days of rejection, if I mention to people, uh, I know I'm asking for a big favor. I know people don't usually ask this. Uh, I know this is weird. If I mention that, the more, more than likely people will say yes to me um, because I, in a way I gained their trust by, by empathizing with them. Um, another thing is I learned I can turn a no into a yes by asking for some things. Like for example, a, a magic word is why. When people say no to you, ask why, always. So one day I went into, um, uh, I went to knock on stranger's door. I had a, a flower in my hand. And uh, by the way, um, I, I don't know why I always knock on people's doors. That was, uh, that was fun. But I said, can I plant this flower in your backyard? And, uh, and, um, and he was like, plant this flower in my backyard? Sorry, I can't let you do that. Um, but before he could turn away, I said, why? He was like, and, you know, I mean, you know, he was this older gentleman. He was like, well, I have a dog that would dig up anything I put in the backyard. And uh, if you want to do this, I mean, I don't want to destroy your flower. If you want to do this, go across the street and talk to Connie. Connie loves flowers. And so I did. I, I knocked on Connie's door and talked to her and her husband. She was so happy to see me. She was like, this flower is awesome. Yeah, let's do it. Um, so half an hour later, there was a flower in Connie's backyard. And, but the thing is, had I left after the initial rejection, I would have thought, okay, of course, he would say no because it's really weird. Uh, he would he didn't, probably didn't trust me. Uh, you know, I was probably wasn't good looking enough or whatever. Uh, but it turned out to be none of that. Is what I offered did not fit his needs. He trusted me enough to give me a referral. You know, using a sales term, um, and I converted that referral. So and then um, I also learned that you can actually say no to people in a nice way that make them your fan. I found out that it's even tough for me, tougher for me to say no than get rejected. To, it's tough for me to, to reject people than getting rejected because it's a flip side of rejection, right? If you, are get, if you say no to people, you're afraid to feel like a jerk. You're afraid to be rejected by them in turn. So it's the same type of fear, but just, just kind of flip side of the coin. And so I, um, uh, but I, I learned that sometimes you can say the right thing and give them the right rejection and they, they, you, they can feel pretty good. So I went to... Tons of, went through tons of rejections. Some rejections were bad, meaning they would, people would be mean, but I was okay. But there were some rejections that were really good. I just walked out a huge fan. So one thing I learned is you can act, when you reject people, um, show them an alternative to get a yes. Um, so you are showing that you're not just rejecting them as a person, but you're rejecting their request for a reason, and you're helping them. And so one day I went to a, co a Costco, love Costco, by the way. Um, I went to Costco and talked to the manager. I said, hey, can I speak over your intercom? I just want to say hi to the customers. And, uh, and he said, sorry, can't let you do that. Uh, but I said, I'm a member, his member membership card. You can check, I spend thousands of dollars here every year. It was like, wow, you're a really good customer um, uh, member. Um, but um, if you want to say nice things about Costco, we can offer you to write a column in our magazine called Costco Connect. I'm sure you get those in your mailbox. And, and uh, you can, we, love, we love the stories from you. Um, and then, so he showed me an alternative, but I said, I'd really love to speak on your intercom. <laughs> and he's like, are you hungry? I'm like, excuse me? I'm like, are you hungry? I'm like, yeah, why? How about I buy you dinner? You know, I sorry I can't let you do this uh, speak over intercom, but I can buy you pizza and hot dogs and order whatever you want. And I, I walked out with a full stomach that day, and I became an even bigger fan of Costco. 
um, and I spent a lot more money there <laughs> afterwards. So I'm sure those pizza and hot dogs are worth it. Of course, that video got viewed by tons of people as well. Um, but the thing is, he not only he showed me an alternative, he also made me a concession. You know, I mean concession, not he, you know pizza, hot dog, you know, hot dog. That's that's not what I mean. But he he made a concession to give me something. So how can I feel bad when I get rejected like that? So there are just a lot of lessons I learned. Um, for time, for reason of time, there's one last reason thing I just want to share with you. It's just two words: just ask. Um, <clears throat> this is the most important uh, most important lesson I learned. I remember I told you I flew someone's plane right once. Um, it was awesome. It was awesome. When I think about flying, I, I really think about just going to airport, you know, uh, taking my belt and shoes, walking through that security check, and and get scanned by that bone scanner, and it will give me cancer someday for sure. And just charging my phone, sitting on dirty carpet. That's my thought of flying. That day, I flew like a bird. It was awesome. And just for one minute, I was just a couple feet above the cornfield. I felt like a seagull looking for fish above the ocean. And the next minute, I was like a thousand feet in the air. There was a cloud all around me. I was kissing it. I felt like an eagle. It was the best flying experience in my life. I never thought of flying was possible like that. Um, but then all this time, there's only one thing I could think about was, what if I haven't asked this person? I would not have that amazing experience. Then in our lives, what if we don't ask stuff? Maybe companies might not be built. Maybe art might not be shared. Maybe careers might not be advanced. Maybe business opportunities might be lost. The reason we don't ask is because we think a rejection is so, something so painful and, and so negative. And there's a biological reason for that as well, going back to, you know, going back to our ancient hunter and gatherer days. But we feel that pain. We would try everything to avoid being in that situation. So we don't ask. And, and so by avoiding a negative, we're getting positive, right? That's actually a, just a lie we tell ourselves every day. Because when we're not going there, getting rejected and asking, we're just getting, we're basically rejecting ourselves by default. And we're getting, getting ignored by the world. So I just tell you, no matter what, don't get ignored by the world. So um, what's, what's next for me? Remember I told you about the story of getting gifts, right? Um, rejection was my curse, was my boogeyman. It haunted my whole life and until when in my, into my 30s. But as soon as I stopped running away from rejection, I started embracing rejection, I turned this into my biggest opportunity and gift. I, um, you know, I, I wrote my, I did my blog and and the, the blog, I it was invited to speak everywhere to talk to businesses and, and people about overcoming the fear of rejection. I just published my book. Uh, and then I'm even building technology right now, mobile technology, um, to uh, measure people how to quantify their fear and help people to overcome their fear of rejection. So it really became my biggest gift. So I want to tell you. You know, when you are getting rejected next time, or may, when, maybe when you face a failure, or maybe when you are seeing obstacles, just consider this. This might be your gift as well. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Hello? Hello? All right, so we got some time for questions. So I'll walk over the mic to you if you have anything. So feel free to just raise your hand. Thanks. This has been a great talk. Um, thank you. One question I had was you talked about how um, rejection is like a numbers game um, and you tried all these different requests. Um, it also sounds kind of like, you know, maybe the more outlandish the request, um, the likelier it could be granted. Did you find any trends around like what types of requests usually got um, accepted versus rejected? Yeah, it, it totally depends on the other person. Some people are drawn to the uh, outlandishness. Some people are totally risk averse. They don't want to deal anything with it. So it, it really depends on the, 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 you know, it totally depends on the other person. I could make the same request to 10 different people and they give me, each one of them give me different answers. So I don't have a statistical analysis on the outlandishness of the request versus, uh, versus normalness. But, and, and sometimes it, it's the reverse. So um, I think it really depends on the other person. Um, but the idea is the, is the same. You know, if you ask, if you, I know, one, one thing I know, if I haven't asked, I would, got no, I would have had no yes. Um, so, all right. Hi. Um, so I guess like out of all of these, of your 100 days of rejection, which one is like the most surprising or like your favorite rejection? 
Um, I had a lot of favorite ones, but uh, and also the other people's favorite ones when they watch all the video are different from mine. Mine was to um, uh, one day I walked uh, into. Uh, Okay, so here's some background. I come from a family of teachers, four generations of teachers. And uh, it's like my family legacy is all about being a teacher. And so my grandma once told me, hey, Ja, you can be anything you want in the future, but it'd be great if you're a teacher. You know, how about that for pressure? And, uh, and so, but the thing is, I, I don't want to be a teacher. I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to do business. Uh, but, but it's also like a dream of mine to teach a college class because I want to teach something and fulfill that family legacy. So I, th I said, in this 100 days, I can ask anything I want. This is my playground. This is my chance. So I walk into, uh, I went, walk into UT Austin, University of Texas in Austin, and start knocking on professors' doors trying to teach their class. <laughs> I said, can I just teach your class? And, um, and then a professor saw, uh, saw me. He was intrigued. I mean, he first thought I was trying to sell him something. I said, no, I'm not, um, and, but I'm trying to teach you a class. He was like, what? And then I showed him, I came in prepared. I had my, uh, I had my tablet with me, I had my uh, you know, lecture all loaded up, I, I was swiping it through and said, here's what I'll teach. And he was really impressed. He was like, wow, I can, I can use this. No one has asked me this. I can use you in my curriculum. This is awesome. So two months later, he invited me to give a lecture to his students. Um, and when I walked out, I was, I was crying because I felt this is something I want to do maybe later in my life to, to build up all the uh, you know, knowledge or maybe get a PhD or maybe I became like have a lot of accomplish, uh, you know, accomplishment, I can do this. But if I take away those conditioners and just ask, I made it happen just like that. So yeah, this, it, has, it has inspired me a lot uh, with that experience. Um, so, so that's my favorite. Hi, thanks. This is awesome. Um, Thank you. I have I have kind of a two-part question. So the first is, uh, when you talked about about being rejection proof, obviously, do you did you do anything to semi protect yourself from rejection? So to prepare yourself for the rejection when it was happening, uh, like you didn't want to walk away from the situation like so so hurt or upset that you couldn't come back to it. Yeah, the idea is I want to be as vulnerable as possible because I th okay the, my whole journey changed. It started with me just wanting to get rejected and feel the pain, you know, and, and, and desensitize myself from the pain. Like, do you know, like, Iron Fist? That was my idea. I'm, I'm going to hit myself, my, my, my hand against the, the iron sand. I want to I become Iron Fist. Or, um, but then I, um, I started seeing the possibility that people might say yes to me. That changed my whole paradigm. That's, I would just ask. And I want to see what happens. And by doing that, I put, started putting humor in this. I, put, I started having fun. And I started not being afraid anymore. So that in itself, the curiosity actually prepared me for the rejection to, to came. And in the end, I, I, I also I learned that rejection is you know, this, it's not per, it's really not personal. It's personal for that person more for me because it's, it shows a lot, everything about that person. There are a lot of Jackies. Um, there are a lot of uh, Costco managers, but also jerks. You know, um, yeah, it's okay. I just I just learned to deal with it. So, the other part of my question was: uh, Did you notice that initially you were leaning towards people you thought would say yes? So, did you ever have to like self-correct as uh, you were doing this? Uh, yeah, sometimes I catch myself because I want to make sure I don't get I don't get off too easy because. You can manipulate people to, to say yes to you by lying, by choosing an easy target. But that's just too easy. I'm just like gaming the game. I, you know, getting a yes is not what I wanted. What I wanted was to learn th from rejection. So uh, yeah, sometimes I don't pick the, the, the most nice guy, you know, and, and, um, and I just go, just, sometimes I do this game, you know. I'll talk to the, the, the number six guy walking through that door, no matter who that person is. It could be a police officer, it could be a, a homeless guy, whatever. I'll just talk to that guy. And, All yeah. right. We've got about five minutes left. Want to respect your time, just so there are probably some of you who want Ja to get your copy of the book signed. So let's go ahead and give Ja one last round of applause. Thank you, guys. Thank you.